subscribe to the book club discussion. I'd like to give a brief summary of the plot really quickly. So, this is the fifth book in the Terran Wanderer series. The series is about a boy named Terran who, in the beginning of these series of books, um, is a young boy who glorifies war and finds adventure magnificent and wants to go off and do all kinds of things. But as, he, as we continue on through the series, he learns some very valuable lessons and becomes wise and very intelligent. And he's no longer ignorant to what war truly is. The fifth book is obviously the final book in the series. The main villain of Ron is attacking Prydain, which is the place where this all takes place. Aran now has the sword Derwin, which Gwydion... I might as well not even explain this, because it's a really long series, and I already said there are spoilers. Um, you might not understand everything that comes out here, but just know that this is a book discussion of pretty much the whole series, and all the tie-ins and everything. So I hope you enjoy this, and here it is. Hello, and welcome to... Terran Wanderer Book Club, as we are discussing the, discussing the final book in the series, The High King. So, um, in my attendance, I have Roger Conrad. So, Hello. say hi. Yeah. Hi. All right. Yeah. So, we will be discussing some <laughs> questions about this book, um, and giving our answers. All right. So, first question. What's your favorite part of the book? Well, I think the end is definitely a, a, a great part of the book. It uh, sums up, or really ties together all the loose ends from the other four books, because this is the fifth book in a well-loved series that's um, been around a while. Uh, but I, it, it, it ties everything together, and I think um, you, know, you see how Taryn has, has grown up and what, the, what sort of was from the beginning, you know, Dalvin... Um, having trying to find uh, or fulfill the prophecy that uh, someone of unknown station in life would eventually become king of Prydain, um, free of his worth and so forth. So that's you know this is that to me is my favorite part of the book because it it really just tied together the entire series. But I thought this book really did um, move quickly. And uh, there was a lot going on pretty much throughout the whole throughout the whole book. I'd say of all the books, it was definitely um, it definitely moved the fastest. I'm glad to see that you've read it. I was wondering what your favorite our favorite part of the book is. Oh, oh, uh, well, yeah. Um, all right. So my favorite part of the book, I think, although this might be weird to you, um, my favorite part was probably. When um, Ka, we we saw Ka's like journey and his adventures through the wilderness, and I loved how it was him spying on the Cauldron Born or was the Huntsman, um, the Aran crew was spying on them, and then suddenly out of nowhere, the what are they called? What are they called again? The Gwythings. The Gwythings, right? And the Gwythings came out and like three of them attacked him. And he narrowly dodged them, and I thought that was really, really cool. And he ended up in like my, my rads, Mirids, Mirids, Mirids lair, Mirids area, and um, he was like treated well. And there are all these other little animals what, what that was were that? talking to him. Oh, right, other animals. Yeah, there. yeah. The place where he he was um, took care of all the um, for all the animals in Prydain. Yeah, it was, a, it was a haven for them, right? Yeah. And speaking of the end, speaking of the end of the book that you said was the, your favorite part, um, I loved how in the end, um, the the guy who took care of all the animals, his, his like realm was only like four animals. It was closed off to men. And I thought, um, I thought the end of the book. Oh, we, we, we have a question later for the end of the book. So let's let's okay. not talk about that now. All right. We shall continue on. Anyway, on to our next question. What is the summer country? Explain. Like, it's like a symbolic or something? Or, like, what um, do you think it is? Summer country? Yeah. Well, sort of a, I don't know, to me, it, it's sort of a, um, 
place where uh, you know you went for your reward. It's sort of like heaven, I guess. That you'd be away from the. I mean, it reminded me a lot of the um, uh, you know the end of Lord of the Rings when they go off to the, the undying lands and so right, forth. Right, right. But you know these books, these uh, uh, Lloyd Alexander books, are very much based on Welsh mythology from, from Wales. So. Um, you know, they're, they're all sort, and, and I think one thing you find when you read a book that's kind of, that's sort of based on an old tradition like that is a lot of commonalities, um, right. with religions and things like that. True. So to me, that was a very, that, that the imagery of that was very interesting in this book. Uh, also, you know, really the imagery of Prydain itself, which was, uh, um, which was Wales, basically, a very lush and green country uh, that I've been to one time and would love to go back to again. But, yeah, uh, I, think, I think we should. Yeah. I think we should go to it. That'd be a really nice vacation. Well, they speak English there, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, they do, actually? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, they do. I think there's a Welsh language, too, or Celtic language, but it's a part of England. Wales. Alright, so, okay. Part of the United Kingdom, rather. It's, wow. England is one of the, England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. Okay, we are kind of getting away from the okay. book now. Alright, so, I think the summer country is kind of a thing of, like, the afterlife, and what goes with the riches, and so, Taryn's decision to stay behind is really, really important. It's like, um, I guess, this might be part of Welsh culture, where these beings that were once, like, mortals and on the ground, some of them chose to go off and be gods and heavenly beings, while others chose to just stay as mortals and protect the homelands and, like, What um, about the Sons of plentiful. Dawn? I mean, the Sons of um, Dawn came from the, the summer so, country. Sons of Dawn. So, I think that, that just, that sounds, like, to me, like, kind of, it sounds to me like the Sons of Dawn are, like, Gods coming down to Earth. But they, were, fight they, they were basically. It was like. But they were mortal, though. I mean, obviously. They were, they were mortal, but um, I think the sons of dawn. I think the sons of dawn are supposed to be representing. Um, sorry for copying off of Greek culture here and Roman culture, but I think they're supposed to represent, in some way, shape, or form, um, the sons of Kronos, um, or the just the people of Kronos. So. We also can't say that, even though it says Sons of Dawn, I'm sorry, but I think there's possibility that some of them could be women. I'm sorry. Well, there were. Right? Um, in, yeah, in, right. in Welsh culture, um, I think it was said that a lot of, there were a lot of women fighting in battle. Um, it didn't really matter what, like, um, gender you were, or, like, what well, race you were Alonby, in the country. Certainly Alonby, Alonby yeah. is, uh, our, 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 one of our main characters, obviously, yeah. is always there fighting yeah. in battles. She, she is, and I think that definitely represents the Welsh culture that this book includes, and I think um, this book does a very good job of representing um, where it actually comes from, and I think this book just gives a whole new like twist on, um, I guess, action, I guess, um, sci like fantasy, and just, it, it just builds its own new, like, amazing world, and you think it's be you think it'd be like Lord of the Rings and that it'd be it's 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 definitely some it's definitely very alike Lord of the Rings, but it has its own world, it has its own kind of religion and culture with it. The Sons of Dawn, there's no like special thing. It's not like this but I think um like Lord of the Rings, um, I think the Cauldron Born are sort of like the, the wraiths or no, what are they called? That'd be I think well, it's sort of like a the, maybe. I mean, there's some parallels there, right? Th there are definitely there I mean, are definitely parallels. How about the, the, like the you know you have like the Numenoreans, I guess, or Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. And, like Aragon and all this, you know, the people that they're you know kind of like high men and they yeah. uh, sort of like come and defend the country against the against so, Sauron and it could be, the so Sons that, of so Dawn that, defend yeah, against Yeah, Dawn. that could be Sons of Dawn. Um, I also think the Fair Folk could be the Dwarves. Because the Dwarves, um, sorry we're comparing this to Lord of the Rings, by the way, but, um, so I think the Dwarves, I think the, well, the, the Fair Folk are kind of like the Dwarves in a sense. 
Um, the dwarves kind of, I guess, showed up kind of late to the battle, and they weren't really, they weren't in the final battle, like the battle for Middle Earth, the, the big, the big battle versus Sauron. Mm. Um, they're kind of, so the Feral Folk were kind, are kind of distant in this book. They're not really, like, they only join the battle because Taryn kind of, I guess, does some good things for them, and they go by his side. You're right. So, again, another thing that if that hadn't happened, then, I mean, who knows what would have happened in this book. If Dolly hadn't been there and the Feral Folk, and the Feral Folk um, hadn't, have, hadn't have joined them, their army and everything, yeah. this yeah, might have turned out way differently. Book, right? Also, the Feral Folk are apparently really good at, like, doing ta doing, like, casts, like, mining and whatnot. They're, like, perfect relation to the dwarves in Lord of the Rings, um, where the dwarves, again, are, like, mining and, um, making these, forging these beautiful, these weapons, and these, um, they're well, getting, a, they're, like, a in the mines. question for you. You know, when, yeah. when, there, when there's the defeat at Cair Dathil, right, and, the, and Iran yeah. is won, and the, the armies are scattered, and there's, there's a decision made to send, um, you know, one, Gwydion would, would take the Sons of Dawn and attack Anubin, while the while the Cauldron Born were trying to get there right. and fight whoever was there, because yeah. the Cauldron Born weren't defending it, and yeah. then there was another war leader had to um, delay the Cauldron Born from getting to Anubin. That was a really important part of the plan. That I think. Yeah. yeah. But so I, my question to you is: Okay, so Gwydion immediately chose Terran. Do you think he had it in mind that Terran was, uh, you know, destined to be the High King? Um. Well, as they, well, as they said, actually... Why didn't he um, choose a more seasoned so battle lord? So, they said, um, Teleria, or whatever his name is, and, like, Gwydion were with, like, Dalvin, and they heard the news of that whole thing, and so they, they, um, with Dalvin, were searching for, uh, the, the king of, the future king of Prydain, and that's probably, again, it, it just seemed, like, the Sons of Dawn seem kind of like the kind of seem kind of like the, the like the all-knowing gods over here that kind of are like they they were searching for their their hero and the king to rule the land and keep the people when in they, peace when they left um, right, when they left they were so they were basically they were basically just waiting to find that hero so that they could set the world keep the world in the balance just like the gods with um i guess a lot of rulers that are there well, they, but yeah right because they they came when the sons of dawn came iran was uh Controlled Friday, I believe. I believe no, it was Akron that controlled Friday. Akron did. Akron controlled it, and then Iran betrayed Akron, and then. And, and the Sons of Dawn showed yeah. up sometime after that to help the help the people. Yeah. And, or, uh, no, I think I think they showed up like around when Akron was there, but in the process, I don't know what actually happened. We don't know like the real lore of this because there's a lot of there are a lot of hints. Hint at it they the really do. In the first book, they Akron hints at like. She says, oh, I was, like, betrayed by Iran. So we know that, yeah, but we don't know concept. when the Sons of Dawn really yeah. showed up. The Sons of Dawn are, like, this this all-knowing, like, group of, guy, group of guys, and probably girls, well, again. Well, you keep saying all-knowing and, and gods and so forth, I mean, they they were certainly kind of high men, I guess. But they, they yeah. They, I, but they did die. I mean, they, they died, so they were obviously not immortal. A lot of, a lot of them and died. A couple, of them, a couple know, of them died. I mean, they didn't obviously know everything. Because Gwydion was uh, tricked by Iran, right? When yeah. Iran was dressed up, was or it was in a fake shapeshifter like uh, like Terran, and um, and Gwydion went to his aid, and that's when they got him, and that's when they took the sword from him. At the beginning of it, but so I'm true. Yeah, you know, but it's interesting that you that you would use those words. But I guess you know what I was asking was, you know, do you think was that was that Gwydion, you know? Giving Taryn a final test. I think, I think, kind of yes. I think that I, again, I'm sorry I went on that huge rant, like completely just sidetracking that point there. But I think, um, I think yes. I think that was kind of like a a test of his of his kingship. I think, although you know, although your point of them not being the all knowing power is very good. I'm sorry. I just feel like um, the sun. Like, a lot of this is symbolism for the real world and sort of what's, what's happening. Again, you said the summer, the summer land, or the, the summer, summer? Summer kingdom. Summer kingdom, yeah. Why do I keep forgetting these things? The summer kingdom is like heaven, 
Um, it seems like the Sons of Dawn are like are like a, a great power. It might yeah, have to do with the world, like a great a power that was in the world. Yeah. It could be um, some Asian power or something. I don't know. Um, like remember, like think about this. Um, this could relate to the real world in like Welsh history and what health well well Welsh history pod. Why is it so hard to pronounce? This could have some significance. Um, it could be the the history of the Welsh, um, where like I actually want to look into that because well, that's, some, it, that's something you should look into. This would be so cool. And what actually, if, like, they do. What if they talk about it here? Yeah. It is based on. Um, well-known, uh, well, it is based on Welsh mythology. Yeah. They, he, of course, changed some of the names yeah, of some um, of the characters. But, uh, I mean, those are all really confusing names. But, but Iran, I think, is definitely one of the, it's definitely a figure of the Death Lord. Yeah. But that's what we, you know, he is the, he is the Death I Lord. Think, I think that, what, what I find really cool about that, um, I think, sort of, Iran might also be something in Welsh culture where, um, one country, one like evil person that everybody kind of hated, like a tyrant maybe, um, ruled over the Welsh country possibly, mm -hmm. and then suddenly right. the people went against him and became and kind of rebelled and yeah. like fought against him and won, like because of some battle. I mean, there are so many things that you can connect if you knew the Welsh history here. Yeah, well, I think that's on... where. Let me ask you, what was there anything yeah. in this book that surprised you? Um. Well, wow, this book is just a surprising book. There are just like things just happening, kept happening like every which way. Um, uh, a great thing that surprised me was when Fudir like, broke his heart fire. I mean, obviously he wanted to be rid of that thing, but um, I think not it, really though, right? He not really. He loved that heart. Yeah. He loved that heart so much, and he had he broke it. <laughs> but he saved them. He, all, sa right? he saved them all with the fire, and I love I love the Fudir for doing. That. Fuditor has been one of my favorite characters, I think. Yeah. Um, Who was your favorite character, by the way? I don't, I don't know. Honestly, so, I hated the Prince of Rune when, in the beginning, but when he died, I think he might be yeah. my I, I missed him so much. Because yeah. in, the, in the fifth book, when he died, like, heroically in battle, I'm like... <laughs> my favorite character in the, in the series was um, Prince Widian. Yeah. But he was sort of a, I guess he was kind of a father, or I, an older brother, maybe, figure to Taryn. I don't know, Dalvin may have been the father. But talking about, the, talking more about that, yeah. William wasn't featured in the movie version of this. Right. But yes. But that's another, yeah, Anyway, that's, that's a whole well, different... Well, the, the, yeah, the, the movie didn't really, didn't really, I think, I think this is actually a, a, a series, could be a good... Um, I think it... It could make a good series of it movies. It could make a great series of movies, right and hands, it's somebody just somebody it just needs to have someone who someone who makes a movie like Lord of the Rings that's not I am what if Peter Jackson did this? I know ah oh, well, that'd be awful because then well, he just he just use it to make money. Lord of the Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is a, so good. We need we need like we need another yeah we need. But another, I think each one of these I, I do think each one of these books could be cast and made into a movie. Yeah. We need a Peter Jackson esque person. Well, somebody that's, um, you know, that has a vision and some joy. Yeah, and I think, I think it'd be really great if someone did a nice live-action version of this. Not the miserable animation, but a nice live-action version, and I think that'd be right. really awesome. This series would become a classic, like Lord of the Rings, and I think that'd make it just that much more known to people. It's, it's a very yeah. underrated series, and I think people should open their eyes to it and just... I think it'd be nice if they filmed it in Wales, actually. That'd be... Just like they filmed Lord of the Rings in New Zealand. New yeah, Zealand, right? Film yeah. This, film this in Wales, I think that'd be uh, pretty neat, because that's a... It is a beautiful... It's a beautiful country. Yeah. But didn't... Didn't, um... Didn't, didn't Donald Trump build, like, his golf course around no, there? No, I think that was in Scotland. That was in Scotland. Okay. Alright, okay. Let's, uh, let's go on to the next question okay. that I have here. Thank you for asking those questions, though. Okay. Um, so what is the importance of, of Durin, the flame sword? Durin was the flame sword. Durin well, the you know, that was, that the, the sword was introduced in the very first book, and, um, I thought it was a very interesting prop, because it was basically kind of a, in my opinion, it was kind of a measuring stick for Terran, because when he first, 
it, it, you know, there, it's, you know, he heard all the warnings, and it said on there only that, and Alonwi could read, I guess, the writing, right? But it, and it said only you of North noble. She thought it said only you of noble blood should draw the sword. And when he, when they were attacked by the Horn King, and he drew it, he was like, you know, woo! He was, you know, knocked back, right? He, and that and he was injured. And fortunately for him, Gwydion was there, right? So they were saved and, and all that. But at that point, Gwydion took the sword. And Gwydion wielded the sword, but, um, you know, and he pretty much had the sword for the entire book, right? But when, when, when Alonwi took the sword out of the spiral castle, the spiral castle collapsed. So it was obviously it was a sword of great, great import. I think... Yeah. But, but then, you know, then the sword, of course, you know, Gwydion has it, and then, of course, Saron steals it right at the beginning of the book and hides it. And um, for unknown reasons, we don't really know why he did that. But then he, um, you know, and then Taryn, of course, you, you, well, you, you know remember. It, you remember yeah. what You know what it could have been, though? I think yeah. Ron did that because of his arrogance. He might have been so arrogant that he would win because. He, he had so many odds for him. Yeah, but that was, was a good place, probably a good place to hide. <laughs> I mean, who was going to go to the top of Mount Dragon? True, I think, but, but I he think also, I think he, he knew that it was going to slaughter all the, I think all he knew it would kill the cauldron more. And I so, think he knew it would kill him, I think, too, which it did. Yeah. Right? So, I think, yeah, I think, um, I think he hid that, he hid that for the reason of that, and also, um, he could have, I think he, he hid it, like, right near his area, and he probably could have hidden it, hidden it like back he behind. Have hidden it back he, in, the, back like, in Anubin itself. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe behind Anubin, some place where they wouldn't well, dare to go. Right. Why didn't he just throw it in the ocean? Exactly. Just. Uh, well, but, but then, then, they, then they'd make it like a cliche with um, Arthur and the Round Table. Uh, well, and maybe. that's it's always you know that that's but that was, but that's you know, British. I think no, that's in, I think that is an interesting thing you hit on there. Why did he hide it at the top of Mount Dragon near his? Not in his fortress, but near his fortress. I think if you had a, a weapon and you were, you know, if, if you were trying to, you know, take over the world or whatever, and there was one weapon that could that could stop you, because that was the they couldn't kill the Cauldron Born with ordinary weapons. They couldn't, and that was the, the Cauldron Born. Couldn't kill him either. Like, all right, so. But Derwin killed yeah. the Cauldron, you know, and Terran drew. Okay, so anyway, I'm getting all right, sorry. sidetracked because I guess the, your question was. What did it? What did it mean? And and you know it was a gauge because when Terran finally drew the sword again, he had been through all this other stuff where he'd proven his worth. He'd learned lessons in each one of these books, you know, and you sort of see it all come together. In the last book. And finally, there he is, and it's like there's nothing he can do. The Cauldron Born is on him. It's the only thing that he can just draw the sword, and he draws the sword. And he smacks, and he drops down one of the cauldron born, and they all die as a as a man. And I think so. Wait, that provides so a new that day. that provides a new theory, though. Think about this: it's all these cauldron born. What if? What if? Just hear me out here. What if it was all along one guy, and he split his soul up into twenty-two pieces? Into how many pieces the cauldron born were? And basically, it's like him. It's probably a Ron, a Ron, like, a Ron probably made him immortal, or something like that, like, unfeeling, he kept, probably made, like, submissive. Well, it's like dead guys, they put in the cauldron, or, right? and then they came out, What if? And but, they came out, think about, uh, think about it, though, if it. one of the guys dies, and all of them die, that, that's not just a coincidence, is it? Well, they're all born out of the cauldron. But that just seems like, but, which it could only be, remember that, could only, they destroyed the cauldron in the second so maybe, time. so maybe they were weakened after that. So maybe that, that maybe that allowed. Because remember, none of them died. None of them even were like you had to have bloody. A guy none of them, none of them were like bloodied or anything. When um, wait, was the witch king like the culture? Was the witch king sort of like the? No, the witch king was just a large, was just a um, bumbling not, fool. Well, what, not the witch king. You mean the horn king? Horn king. Sorry, yeah, the horn king I get was, it mixed up. The a, similarity, the, the similarities are just. So endless. He was a Ron's champion. He was a he was a Ron's but, warlord but, in the first place. But think about this, like the Horn King, the Witch King, so similar. They're both like they're both um I guess well, I don't like know. war champions I think of the Horn, Sauron. Like 
Well, one no, of them's but... a Sauron and one of them's a Varon. Think, alright, think of that. They sound exactly the same. Sauron, Elrond, they're so similar in sound. Well, actually, The Lord of the Rings was written before this. But, but it, really? But the, but it was, this, wait. But I, this book, these books were definitely not copied on. Lord they, I don't think they were. I think they were taken from, well, like we've said, they were taken from Welsh people. I think they were, they were definitely different. They probably, they probably, um, so, okay, let me think about it. So, so perhaps so, Tolkien copied Welsh mythology to some extent. Who knows? So I think, um, yeah. you, you know what might have happened, though? So Lord of the Rings was based off of, what exactly, what was that based off of? I, well, that's a good. That's another good question, and you know, I think the next time you do a book report, you should read Fellowship of the Ring at least, and, and maybe read all three of those books because those are pretty good works of literature too. Very yeah. <coughs> rich imagery and everything, but I think they were totally different. You know, in the book conceptions. I mean, I, you know, we've, we've we've mentioned a few things that are similar, which may lead back to the to them both being rooted in um, English or Welsh mythology, but I. You know, they were separate stories. Right. But that would be a different, different question, I think. It, defi it definitely would be, I think. Um, I mean, we're getting off topic, talk, right, well, topic get, a little bit, so. Let's get through these questions. We, got, we gotta go through these questions a bit. All right, We've get... spent so long All right, talking, let's about, get... talking about what the third. I think this is a good conversation, though, because this needs to be said. This book is very, this book is just overall very, very, it's well put together. It's very, it's very, very and thick. It's like a lot of the angles. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is obviously a good book series, but the Lord of the Rings also just kind of throws everything out there a bit and doesn't really have a lot of um, different things that go back to past books. Um, this book, on the other hand, like so much of the fifth book is traced from all the other four books. It's as if the four books are just character development leading up to this final book, where all these like things of character yeah. are pulled from all these different books. And then throw and then put it in the book in such a manner that you're just like, oh my gosh, this happened. That that was in like the third book. Wow, yay! Yeah, no, not not a lot of wasted words you see as you read the, the fifth book here. But, very careful, yeah. very good usage of, of the words, and I think Lloyd Alexander did a very good job at making this book. Yep. I wonder how long it took him to write this. I don't know. Probably had a plan for I, the I series. I think he has written other books, but this is uh, probably his this best. This is magnum opus. Yeah. So. <laughs> but he probably had a plan for the series, like when he started. I hope. All right, let's go. Okay. Series. All right. Anyway. Okay. Uh. So this one goes back to the topic of that I was just not talking. Tie-ins to the previous books. Example. Right. I think we. Examples. I think we. You know, we we talked about the characters. We talked about. Darnwin. There are some actually some little things that have that happened in there too, like Alonwi's um, bauble. Let's talk yeah. talk about that. Yes. Um, and and her ring. Yeah. So both of them are like enchanted items. And the book, right? The book. The book of. The book of yeah, the golden pelotron. The golden pelotron. Oh. Yeah. Wait, what did that kind of thing? Well, that's that's her bauble, right? Oh, that's just her bauble. Oh, it comes like, into play all the time, right? The, I mean, the golden pelotron. Golden pelotron. Remember, at the in, in this book, it saves lives of, of Karen and the companions because she lights up the whole valley with No, but wasn't that the ball wasn't that the ball the ball though? Yeah, but it's called the Golden Pelican. Okay, alright. Didn't pick that up. Right, I, I didn't pick that up. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. um I've read all well, five of these books these and books I've several times, so true. I have an advantage. I mean But that's a that's um she had the bauble yeah. the very first time we meet Alonri she's in spiral she's a prisoner in spiral castle. Right. The background and that's when Taryn and, and she and Taryn escape. Spiral Castle falls apart, but she has her bobble with her, and her bobble always lights the way. And, and, and we later yeah. find that she, and actually, remember she drops the bobble when she's kidnapped on the Isle of Mona. Remember when Afrin kidnapped? And also, and Mag also when, also her. when she's um, boat, yeah. And Taryn, oh. and Taryn actually uses the bobble. But wait, wait, wait! It lights up for him. Yeah, it actually oh, it, lights up. Right, for him it lights up for him, and cave. that's. That's Blue's really, fate. that's quite strange. Is that like just fate or is it? Ooh. I don't know, is it? Ooh, oh my gosh, I have it. Yes, okay. Um, what if, what if their love, like, yeah, I makes think it maybe glow? So. Well, what you if, know. what if the fact, the fact that Alonwi is magical, um, 
and they're like in, and they're in love. Technically, so don't don't get me wrong. People, uh, people watching, people watch, like, listening to this. I Honestly, guess. Honestly, they were in love like from the very first. They book. they were in love from the yes. very. Okay, true. Sort of. I mean, they probably like didn't show it, didn't realize it yeah. in the beginning, but they probably oh, yeah. kind of were. They probably were, but um. Thing is, Alondri is not a damsel in distress. She is instead a very witty and wise and she has, she has comedic and so very energetic. Very essential, and essential although character. although she, at times she can be kind of like bratty, but that's that's funny. Like maybe not bratty, but like she is she is very sensible and she doesn't. She's often right. Yeah, she's very she's, sensible. She's very sen. I mean, she doesn't she doesn't go like oh well. It's in my pride to do no. She's like no, no, and I love that about Alongwe because she's not just some some like stupid princess who's like, oh, I must do this for my kingdom. Ah. Well, no. she she um Shush. she's no she uh you know she she very essential to the to this entire thing. Extraordinarily essential. You know, um, I think, and and that is a good point because. Most of the characters in this book are, you know, men. Yeah. I think, I guess the exceptions are the three witches, right? Alonwi. Uh, and Akron. And Akron. Those are really the... the and then there characters. are, like, all the, the wives. And so... There's a few other ones. Actually, there, there are, like, wives and stuff and whatnot, and... Teleria. So, well, there's Teleria, the there's Teleria, yeah. yeah. But, so... But it is mostly there, men. There are all the, they're all, like, the housewives, they're all, like, the housewives and stuff, and, like, people in the kingdom, and they're like, oh! Well... I think what really sets this what really sets this series apart from others is that in other series, um, women are kind of treated like they're nothing and they're not really that. Well, they're not really that essential. Yeah, well, they're not that essential. Hey, let's let's think. Let's talk about Lord of the Rings because we have four. I mean, right. there's really, I guess you have you have Arwen in there. But t is that? But she's she, she unlike the nothing. movie. She's not in she's in the movie. She's not in any of the battles. And Galadriel is in one little part. And of, of all of Galadriel is like that's it. I mean, she's boss. So Galadriel's boss. These but books she's actually, just like, they're, they're, you know, the, the women in these books are actually, I think, far more significant to development than um, than the female characters in Lord of the Rings. It's kind of interesting. I think so. Um, all right, what else you got? So this is the final question. Okay. Um, I think we should say this. Little, um, we were talking about more of Welsh history. Um, unless you want to end it now. What's that about? The last question is basically the ending of the book, and this is a very this is a very complicated topic because it's such a weary it was a it's a really cool and really nice and well put together ending, but it's also a very confusing and very in depth ending. It's, it's not, not a Disney. Ending. It's not a Disney like happy ever after. Everything's great no matter what. We have nothing. There's nothing wrong. What? Yeah. It's honestly not at all a Disney ending. It's it's kind of sad, actually. It is sad, right? Because they're, really they're is. definite. They're partings. I mean, they're right. Taryn and, and Alonwe. I mean, not you know, let's, because we can spoil, yeah. We can definitely do spoilers. L okay, all right. Okay, spoiler spoiler alert. I'm probably spoiler gonna put it on the on the sure. video that I'm putting this in. But spoiler yeah. alert. Either way, um, let's just yeah. let's just flat out say what the ending is. Yeah. Well, Taryn and Alonwe, they they um. You know, obviously they right. they get together and they're king and queen, right. which makes sense now. That when you particularly when you look back, um, some of the bit part, the bit characters in there, right? Like yeah. King Smoy. You know, he was in. You know, he's he's not a major. He's a, he's a major character, but he's not like one of the main characters. Right? True, true. Um, you know, Gast and Gory, and they're in a, and, and they're like a small. Yeah. They they describe them as being there. Evan Smith, Lassar. Right. I mean, they're with they're with Taryn. But they're, but they're not, really, they're not yeah, well, yeah, they're not really that important. We don't really explore them. They're not really, you know, yeah. the friends of Taryn. There are, there are a ton of characters that they kind of go through and explore with the plot. So, right. um... Well, like, Gwydion... Yeah, one thing, one thing I wish they did is they went into... I wish they Gurgy. went into the... I, went, I wish they went into Gurji's backstory because they kind of didn't do anything with Gurji and they just said, here, it's it's <laughs> the main character's companion. Deal with it. I, I... Yeah. If... If um if Lord Alexander makes like a, a follow up book like explaining the series or like sure some some like some back happen. knowledge, yeah. I really I really really want Gertie to be explained because from the beginning we saw and um Taryn was traveling with Gideon and he 
And then, um, suddenly, out of the blue, this, like, creature, like, falls down to the ground or something. Right. And it's, like, climbing through the trees. It's like, oh, kindly human or whatever. Like, I love Gurdjieff's speech, and I love his I love his character. But I just really wish he was explored more, because, I mean, all we got was, like, he goes around the trees and, like, just kind of is in the forest. That doesn't really give us anything. Well, Gurdjieff, like, when he starts, I mean, there is a, he does have an arc, you know, a character arc. I mean, he... A development arc. I mean, he he starts out. He is yeah. kind of, you know, yeah. you know, kind of a he's kind of a thief, and he's he's kind of up to no good. Yeah. But then when they start trusting him, then he responds, and he want and he becomes like the most loyal of all, and and giving. I think yeah. You know, when so, he saves he saves yeah. them all when uh, when, yeah. when Morda the wizard is uh, you know in the fourth book. Right. He, he gives all. the bone so that Taryn can snap it and kill Morda and bring them all back to right. their, their original forms. He's, and he's very brave. I just, is brave. I just, I wish they went into that character, I wish they went into Gurji more. I love, they did go into Papudadur, they did, like, say that he was a king and that he wanted yeah. to, he, yeah, like, Gurgi's was kind, kind of, of bored. Isn't he? he is, and I really wish, is Lord Alexander dead? I, no, I really don't know, buddy. Almost I mean, this made. book was written in 60, 1968. So okay. How old was he when he made that? Yeah, okay, but yeah, well, I just, I mean, I hope and pray that he's still, because I really want more about well, Gurdjie. And that's, I like, you can, he can make that, a full book about that. That's... That may be just something that we have to kind of imagine ourselves. I mean, do we have to, like, make our own story for Gurdjie? I don't want to... I mean, Lord Alexander made all these, like, descri beautiful descriptions for all these characters. Well, something that you and may these, not like, have known unless you read this little okay. part. He was. He consulted actually with um, uh, someone who was very, uh, um, you know, kind of an expert. He consulted with people that really knew their stuff okay. regarding Welsh mythology and so. Right. So yeah. Any, anyway, well, I, I I agree with you. That's that's kind of an, an ambiguity there. Yeah. Um, and I, I wouldn't say that every the single ambiguity, detail, confusion. You could have. Sorry. You could. You know, like the one thing that. Um, that Tolkien did with Lord of the Rings, the very back part of the last book is all this chronology, right. all this description of the characters, all these other scenes that happen. Um, you know, a, you know, like a history of all the ages of the world. Right. And you know, that's something that somebody could have could do for this. I I would love if some fan like had some actual reasonable list or something about. All these characters. The other thing is, I never saw it. Ages. I, I thought somewhere in these books there was a map, and maybe some of the editions there's a map of Friday. Yeah. But instead, you just have to have kind of a map in your head of where all these things are. Because yeah, I find that very interesting because. It is interesting. You know me. I sadly I don't really. Okay. So, um, my language dress teacher. Um, sadly, reading is not my favorite thing to do. You got through these books. I did, quickly. and I, I really love these books. And again, there are certain books that I love, and certain books, and a good chunk of books that I don't really like. And that's you okay. But choose the right books. Anyway, I yeah, probably. But all right. So continuing on with the end. Um. So we see that they get Taryn and Long. We get together because of um. Pretty pretty much what I kind of felt about this ending. So I I love this ending as well, but um. I also thought it was kind of, it was a little, 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 like, kind of like a, oh, we're just kind of rushing to tie up loose ends a little, a little bit, because, um, Taryn over, Taryn over, like, um, Dalvin has the Book of Three, and it's like, oh, the Book of Three just says all of time, and we knew from the beginning that you were going to be king. Ha ha, no, I you're I king. I didn't get that, though. I didn't, I didn't think it said that. It, it said, he didn't know. He said it's a Book of If. True. That's what he says at the back, the last part of the, it's okay. a book of if, if you had done this, if you had solved your task, if you weren't killed, right. you know, all these ifs, and then, you know, yes, you're, you would be the high king. And, yeah, I just forgot that, but, yeah, they did say all oh, if to that, and I love, yeah. I love the messages this, book's te this book tells, I love all these things that this book does with it, um, I think the, one of the main messages this book um, sets through is, I guess, you shape your own destiny. You 
kind of, you are you. You you do what you want to do, yeah. and no one, no prophecy, no fortune tell, nothing. No fortune cookie or right, whatever. Nothing, that says nothing says tells that you what you do. Yeah. You are, you do what you want. You have your own opinion. You think um, you can do something that you think you can do. If you want to, if you want to major in language arts, go ahead and do that. If you want to major in math, go ahead and do that. Do what you feel is best. And I love, and the message of this book, I think, makes this series all the more better. Well, how about other things? Like, I think Taryn, growing up, you know, becoming a man, you know, yeah. and in every, you know, in learning, and, but he did have, like, so many good core values, I think. I mean, it's, you know, loyalty is right. one, trustworthiness, and actually all the scout laws. Yeah, know, as I said yeah. in my um, in my rant about the movie, which right. you probably get Yeah, I think point. the movie just, it, it kind of doesn't, yes. it's not really to a talk part about of the movie. movie. The movie's I, just sort of a gay romp through, you know, whatever, some yeah. fantasy. The, mo the, movie's, just, is, the movie's just yeah. kind of, Dis Disney just kind of do whatever they want, but this series is always, in my mind, going to be a classic to me. I think, I honestly, same same as you, I like this series, I like reading this series more than I like watching Lord of the Rings movies. I think I could definitely read these again. Maybe, maybe I wouldn't want to just because I, maybe I'm, I wouldn't be at, um, well, I'm in you, a pretty good room right now, but I don't know. Next you can read, uh, you, you can read Lord of the Rings, I think, if you like these, I think, if you like this book. I think I, I, think I might. Yeah, the, um. A little bit longer, a little bit more imagery, but I think you, uh, if you enjoy this genre, I think it does yeah. really well. I think books. so. I don't know what level this is. I don't know what Lexile level thing this is, but I find um, this book has a lot of just great language and great descriptiveness, and I love. Um, I don't care what level this book is. I don't care. Like I like I honestly don't care because this book. A lot of books aren't just about like how hard they are to read or how confusing the words are. They're about how it tie how everything ties in and did how learn, the lesson. Yeah, you're right. I mean, did you learn? Yeah. Did you learn any words from reading this book? Um, I feel like I, I totally did, but I just kind of. Um, they're explained in context. They they are explained in context. A lot of them, and I love this book because it's. I mean, it's not only just a great book, but it's also. It's a, it's, it's a fun book to read to not be like, ah, I can't, I don't understand what's happening. Ah, you, you understand kind of what's happening, but also some of the things are kind of unclear. And that's, and that's what gives this book um, a lot of really good reread value. Um, a lot of other books are just kind of like a single read, and it's like, oh, oh, and you can't God. You actually made it through. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, hey, thanks for uh, letting me um, participate in your book. Discussion. I, I enjoyed You're it. You're so welcome. I think this was a really, this is a really fun discussion. I wanted to do this discussion on this book because it's the last book of this beautiful series, and it's kind I've, of sad to get through all these books, isn't it? It is, because I don't have another book to read, and I was really enjoying well, we'll, this book. We'll work on, we'll work on that anyway. Awesome. Okay. So, all right. To end our, to end our meeting here, um, thank you to the people watching. Um. Thank you to everyone watching here. I hope uh, you really enjoyed it. I uh, I know I did. I know I enjoyed doing this. Um, and I hope you have a good day. I guess. Bye. So to summarize, the attendees were Roger Conrad and myself. There are a lot of questions asked during the discussion. The five that I came up with were, what's your favorite part and why? What is the summer country? Explain. The importance of Derwin, the flame sword? Explain. The tie-ins to the previous books? Examples. And ending, like or dislike? Explain. We also added in a couple of other kind of questions as we were discussing the book which I found very interesting. One of them was, who's your favorite character? And another one was, did anything in this book surprise you? Personally, I found this book very surprising, but you'll see that, and you probably already saw what happened.
in the discussion. So the answers, favorite part and why. So Roger liked the end. Although the end was one of the questions, um, he said it just ties all the loose ends together and it shows how Taryn grows up through the series. And I think that's probably true as well. And then his answer for what is the summer country? He said it's like heaven with um, riches and glory. And I think he thinks it's part of the Welsh culture. I probably, I think that kind of too. I also kind of said that on um, the importance of Derwin, the flame sword. Um, it's introduced in the first book. It's an interesting prop. Um, of great importance. I think so it basically allowed them to beat the Death Eaters and eventually defeat Aran. And we also had another conversation about um, how Aran basically very poorly hid this weapon from the companions. And if he just hidden it, like, if he just like thrown it in some lake somewhere, or, like put it in some place like around his fortress, like not in front of it, but like behind it or something, and kept it like guarded, then we, they wouldn't have this. They wouldn't have that problem, and Aram probably would have won. He had so many advantages going for him. He had basically destroyed like all the defenses um, for Kira Dalvin, except for obviously Dalvin, which we all know what happened there. Even though you probably don't, because you didn't read the book. But anyway, tie-ins to the previous book. Um, we did discuss that kind of before we actually came to that question. Some of the tie-ins being the Cauldron Born, the, the bird creature thing from Iran that Terran saved as a young boy, and basically came on to help him find the sword. And I thought that was really, really cool. And I think in this final book, the author really chose very, really... Um, chose his words very wisely and made everything count. I really respect Lloyd Alexander for doing that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the discussion and I hope that maybe this makes you want to read it because you probably have already had everything spoiled for you. But that doesn't matter, it's still a really good book, it has great reread value. We didn't even discuss everything that was in the book. There's so much to talk about in this series. It's really one of the best series I think ever created. Although many say Lord of the Rings is the ultimate classic in fantasy and sci-fi and whatnot, I think that Terran Wanderer is definitely way up there in being one of the best action and adventure fantasies to be in the reading world. Anyway, so that's our discussion. Hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful day. Bye. It's so beautiful. The elegance, elegance, the story of why, why, why I love space. Oh, that's so cool, so cool. My computer can't handle the rendering. Oh, that's.